All right, well, hi everyone, we'll make a start. Um, thanks very much for coming along tonight um, and sacrificing an hour of your time on uh, this beautiful day during Daylight Savings. Uh, I'll introduce our staff who we have here, apart from Bill, because he's, oh no, Bill's here. Yep. Um, Bill Stapleton, our Deputy Principal, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Penny Tranter, our Principal. Um, and Vicky Rumsey from Comp Now um, is here as well, who I'll speak a bit more about um, later on. But welcome, and my name is Jeremy Lacorny. For those of you who haven't met me yet, I'm new this year uh, in a new role at the school, which is called Assistant Principal for Innovation, Teaching and Learning. And one of the key focus areas for innovation is obviously digital learning and the use of technology in and outside of our classrooms to um, capitalise on great teaching and learning that can take place. Uh, and so part of that uh, focus has been looking at our digital learning program that we have in the school and trying to find ways to constantly improve it and make it the best possible digital learning experience that it can be for our teachers and students. Uh, I've got my contact details here and I'll put them up again at the end uh, if you have any questions after tonight and should want to get in touch with me. Can I just want to mention it's being recorded? Yes, I do want to mention that it's being recorded. Uh, quite a few families have wanted to come along tonight but unable to make it. We want to make this information accessible. So we're recording. Now, it's only focused on me and the screen, so don't worry, it won't um, pick you up. Um, but if you don't want to be recorded, uh, if that when we have questions at the end, perhaps just hold your questions until we break off afterwards and come up and ask us then. All right? Um, okay, will this work through here? Maybe not. Bill, I might need to get you to do my slide clicking for me. Sure. Tough. So, the first thing that we did at the start of the year was speak to our staff and students about how technology was functioning in the school. Uh, ask questions about the devices that they were using, the, their satisfaction with the internet access that they had at school, uh, access to different resources and software and those sorts of things. Uh, we spoke to our teachers as well. And what we started to do was generate a list of, of minimum requirements for effective digital learning in the school. Uh, we did ask questions about the types of devices and the operating systems and those sorts of things, but what was sort of really obvious early on was some deficiencies in our actual uh, infrastructure environment in the school. Um, and that's next slide, sorry, this won't be as seamless as I like without the clicker, but um, that was what was firstly obvious to us, is that we needed to upgrade our our technology infrastructure um, because what was sort of happening was that it, the devices themselves um, were like the iPads for example well, the iPad is a satisfactory device but the school's network and the server and the wireless infrastructure that they're connecting to was letting them down and so we're ending up with negative experiences based on the environment rather than based on the actual device. Um, and so, thanks Bill. So what we did was we uh, approached DECD uh, and IT services there to consult with them about the best way forward for making some improvements to our infrastructure. And they suggested some strategies and also um, uh, we have two IT staff working in the school, but for the level of work that needed to happen, they recommended us partnering with an external provider. And so that's where CompNow came on board. Uh, Vicky's here representing CompNow tonight. CompNow is an external IT solutions company. We partnered with them. We showed them our minimum requirements that we'd identified from our uh, family survey that we'd um, done that you, you might remember completing uh, if you did and the teacher and student feedback that we'd been collecting and then Comp now helped us to plan by auditing our school's environment what do we need to do with our IT infrastructure in order to um, bring that in line with meeting our minimum requirements 
And the answer was, well, several things. Uh, I don't think it had been done for some time. So I need to just, at this point, I'm about to talk about some technical stuff that is going to probably go over the top of some of our heads, especially mine. <laughs> I'm not an IT guy. I tell our teachers that all the time, don't I, Petty? I've had to kind of sadly become an IT guy to get us to the point that we need to get to this year. Um, but it was, it was really necessary for us to work out what are the key bits of technology that need to be um, brought up to speed at our school to get the environment to a satisfactory position. So the first thing that we've done is had uh, optic fibre internet installed, a gigabit per second internet connection. It was completed in the second week of the holidays just gone. Um, gigabit per second is really great speed, if you don't know what that means, but it's, it's excellent. It has an unlimited download capacity, which means we can have unlimited data access for students and teachers. We currently were running off of a 50 megabit per second uh, wireless connection, so not cable, it comes in via an aerial. So what we've got now is hugely superior to what we did have. So that's a, a big tick there for internet access. Uh, the next thing that has happened in the term three holidays just gone is a server upgrade. <coughs> so we've replaced an old server that was running out of memory and um, was really critical to the to the school's network functioning correctly. Uh, and the networking, so like the way that I've learned about it is the, the school's network is kind of like an octopus and the server is like the head which sits kind of in the middle of the school and then you've got to get that service out to all of the different parts of the school and that's like the network. Bill, I haven't run that analogy past you, but what do you reckon? It'll, it'll work. Okay. It'll work. So the network is like the tentacles. Um, okay, the next thing that was going to improve our service for staff and students was internet filtering. So there's quite a few students here, and I'm sure when I mention internet filtering, they'll realise what I'm talking about, because quite often at the moment, when you're trying to navigate to a website, a completely innocent website that could be really beneficial for learning, it comes up with this red screen that says blocked and you can't get to it. And we are currently using, Bill if you move to the net, yeah, so we're currently using an internet filtering service that's provided by the education department called McAfee. And it's great that it's provided by the education department because it's nice and easy for us. It's not great that it's super duper locked down and protected to the point that it is actually preventing a lot of the great teaching and learning that can take place. And so we have uh, gone with a, an external provider of internet filtering, because of course internet filtering is very important, but we want it to restrict what needs to be restricted and have control over enabling access to the teaching and learning resources that are going to be really useful. With McAfee, we don't have that control. With Cyberhound, we do. So that's another improvement that we're making. That gets installed in about three weeks' time. Um, this has all happened recently because it's taken a lot of this year to, first of all, identify the need, uh, to find a suitable external provider to help us plan it, and then also to implement it takes time as well. So we're actually, it's quite exciting because we're approaching a point where, the next bit will, <laughs> all of that technical stuff ultimately is going to translate to a much better end user experience of the, the use of technology in our classrooms for our teachers and our students who are equally frustrated at the moment with the level of technology service that they've got access to. So huge improvements are coming um, with all of this infrastructure upgrade. So the other thing that we're going to begin is the use of Microsoft Office 365, which you might be familiar with. Uh, it's cloud-based Microsoft Office. So your regular Office suite like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, you can access those and they're stored in the cloud. So you have a OneDrive account that comes with your Microsoft Office. It means that you've got storage capacity 
not locally on your device, which frees up space on your device, but it also means you can access your files from any device, as long as you log into Office 365. The department has provided every teacher and student with an Office 365 <coughs> account. So that was a big win for us, that we could access that. We haven't activated it yet because we've had to get all of that infrastructure right. If we tried to turn on Office 365 first, we'd be putting the, the cart before the horse. Um, we've got to be able to access our Office 365 by having an environment that suits it, which is where we're getting to, which is great. Um, there are some of the features of Office 365 that are, that are enabled, which are brilliant, are things like OneNote. Um, our teachers have just started dabbling with OneNote and it's very exciting, the possibilities and the co collaboration that it enables is going to be really fantastic. So when we start using that, we expect to see um, so, some really great opportunities in classrooms. Uh, okay, thanks, Bill. The other thing that needed to be refreshed was our teacher laptop fleet. Um, students in the room, you might not even realise that your teachers have a laptop because the teacher laptops are so old and heavy that's really difficult and not really worthwhile for your teacher to actually bring their laptop to the classroom. We had to refresh them and we spent a lot of time and effort identifying the most suitable device that was going to meet the needs of what teachers wanted to be able to do in their classrooms. Um, and we picked a device that's going to work really well with Office 365 and work well with OneNote. Um, if you move to the next slide, I think... Oh, no, no, back on that one, sorry. But um, you see it comes with an active stylus. Uh, it's a 360 device. It folds back on itself and you can use it in, like, a tablet mode and you can actually write directly onto the screen. Um, it, and that enables some, uh, some great capabilities for teachers. So... Next one. Then we, <coughs> then we shift our attention to the student bring your own device program. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you might remember that we did survey the school community earlier in the year to ascertain um, your preferences about the type of device for students to use and the preferred operating systems for them to use and the types of features in devices that are desirable for you. And we've tried to shape a program based around that. One thing that I really want to stress is that the program, Vicky, to use Vicky's term, is a movable feast. It's one that we're constantly trying to improve. What we've put together at the moment is just at this point in time, what we recommend is the best way forward for us to keep improving our student learning program but we want to hear as much feedback as possible so if you can think of improvements types of devices um, different suggestions for how we might change things and, and run it better we're always open to hearing that but this is what we've come up with at the moment so at year eight and nine, uh, the majority of families were happy with the iPad program. Uh, some of the uh, so, some of the people who haven't been having a, a positive experience with the iPad again, we think has come down to the fact that our actual school's environment was not supportive enough of connecting with that iPad and enabling it to do the things that it should be able to do. So what we're saying is it was a decent device in a not so decent environment. Now that we've brought the, the environment up to speed, we expect to see the iPad <coughs> to be functioning far better. Um, and we want to unleash the capabilities of an iPad. I've, I didn't mention at the start, but I've worked at two previous schools. One of them we used iPads. And my experience of it was, was vastly different to what I've experienced here so far. And I, I don't think it's due to anything other than the infrastructure not enabling them to work as they should be. And so we think we'll get to that point. We'll run lots of professional learning with our teachers and we expect to see the use of the iPads flourishing in classrooms. If that's not the case, as I said, this is a movable feast. If we decide that it's not working for us at Seaview, then we can change that down the track. Um, next slide. 
Thanks, Bill. This question was asked in the, the community survey, which is about a laptop. Uh, should your son or daughter use a laptop, what is the preferred operating system? And the preferred operating system for about 70% was Windows. At this point, um, one, one of the questions that we've had is about the number of devices that students use when at school. And the reality is, a five year period is outside of the expected life expectancy for a device. And if you think about it too, a student using a device at year eight is going to be five years old when they get to year 12. And th those two final years of year 11 and 12, their senior years, is when it's really crunch time. We don't want to have students set up with a five year old device when they're at year 12. And if you look at most schools, what is happening is students will use two devices across years 8 and 9 and then moving into year 10, 11, 12. The great thing about the iPad is its ability for creativity. Uh, the, the apps that are available and the use of the camera enable students to be really creative in the way that they present their work. A laptop suits senior school. It, 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 therefore, I guess, I hate to say it, but the, the focus on content and uh, written work and the demand of the device to meet those needs sort of outweighs the creative capacity of the iPad by the time that you get to senior school. And so we see a laptop being the more suitable device for 10, 11, 12. The preferred model was a Windows operating system. And so what we've done is we've picked some devices that meet the requirements of a, devi of a device, which came from the survey. So I'll just give you an opportunity to see these. Do you want? These were sort of the, the five key features that were coming through as what we value most in a laptop. And I think uh, we really nailed it there. They are the absolute critical things that we need. Um, so we've picked uh, four different Windows laptops that yeah meet those requirements. And then I've got this slide here, because currently we've got a situation at Seaview where uh, quite a few students are opting to use a school-based laptop in years 10, 11, 12. And you might remember that in 2008, there was a government-funded program called the Digital Education Revolution, uh, implemented by Kevin Rudd. Was a, I think it was his first time round. I don't know if it was like the second coming or not, but it, it was implemented. It was funding every single school to purchase a device for every single student. It's a fantastic program. I hope it comes back again soon. But the sad reality is it hasn't. So what Seaview did, as every other school did, is use that funding to provide enough laptop computers for every student but they're now nine years old. And so the devices that we're talking about are these here. Uh, there's that one, and then when students are borrowing those, oh, oh and there's not enough, there's this one. Right, now Bill, if you go back to the previous slide, the point that I want to make is that these are not reliable. They have a, no battery life. You, you have to borrow a charger when you borrow one of these because you have to run them off the power. They are certainly not lightweight. In fact, I'm going to put them down because they're too heavy. They're out of warranty. And because of all those things, it makes it really hard for our two IT staff to support the use of them at school. And it means that they're spending a lot of their time and effort in just keeping those things up and running. So what we propose then is that what we've really tried to do, and I've hope, I hope I've sold it to you, is we've invested as much as we can in getting the environment to a point that it's really going to be suitable and enabling for bringing your own device to see you and have it actually flourish in the classroom and work effectively. But where we need parents and students to come to the party is in providing their laptop computer. We, we just simply aren't in a position anymore to be able to provide a school-based laptop because it, it doesn't meet those criteria. Um, 
which are really just the basic criteria. Um, there's a heap of other great features that we can't even mention with those because they're just well beyond it. Um, so, with that in mind, we'll talk to you about the purchasing portal. What we've done with our partner ConfNow is establish an online purchasing portal where we've listed the four devices that we've identified as being really suitable and meeting the needs of teaching and learning in the school. Um, ConfNow are able to access prices that are below recommended retail price, which is why we um, talked about them being really competitive prices. Uh, the other thing about them is that they all come with a three-year warranty, which is really important because we need that device to last you over year 10, 11 and 12. Um, and the support model of that warranty is, is really great. Because you're purchasing it through a Seaview High School CompNow portal, it means that our IT support team can act as a conduit for you in supporting you with that device if the need, if there's a need in terms of warranty. So if you were to go and buy a laptop from JB Hi-Fi and it was in warranty and something went wrong with it, there was some sort of fault, if you take it back to JB Hi-Fi, well that's where you have to take it back to and then they follow through with the provider, you know, it might sit out the back of their shop for a week or something. It, the turnaround could be really slow, I'm not sure. But here we have a next business day warranty. So if there's a fault, you bring it to IT, they contact HP or Dell, whoever the provider is, and they're in the school on the next business day, assessing the machine and organising for a replacement. It doesn't mean you get the replacement the next business day, but it does mean that it gets seen to really quickly. I'll get Vicky to talk more about the portal shortly, but I will just go through the four devices that you'll find there. Um, we wanted to cover, we wanted to provide the, the, what we see as the best proposed device, and the, the way we see this functioning in an absolute ideal world, I talked to you previously about the device that our teachers are using, which is this one here. Uh, the one that I talked about with the active stylus, uh, the foldable 360 device. Um, that's our proposed best model. But what we've wanted to do is provide a range of options with varied specifications and obviously varied price. So we've put them at a good, better, best model for you to opt into what best suits you. Um, the price range it is a bit variable depending on the prices that, from the providers at the time, but it is about $900 up to $1,700. As I said, that's below retail. Um, just a quick glance, so the, the HB Probe 430 is this one here. This is the, the what we're proposing as the good model. Uh, they're the features. Um, it does have a touch display. It's not an... It's not one with an active stylus with inking where you write on the screen, but it's a touch display as in you can scroll and click and those sorts of things. Uh, the next one is a Dell model, and unfortunately the demo device didn't arrive for that. We've got the three, but not the Dell. But the Dell is the Latitude 3380. Um, similar uh, from this model, but a bit of a step up in one of the specs, I think. I think the, might be fairly similar. I think the pro... Uh... Probably, yeah. They're very similar. Yeah. So Two similar yeah. models, different options. It's probably a little bit harder case. Mm. Okay, and similar pricing. I'll, I'll get you to mention that after Vicky. The other one's that... I almost fell off my chair when I heard about this one. It's a Fujitsu. It's not a fridge. Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically, from what I can, from what I've been able to work out, it's a really similar to the HP teacher laptop, the one that we're saying is the best option. It is a 360 foldable device. It does come with the active stylus. Um, military, spec. military spec casing, which is, I don't know if that's going to meet the needs of students, but I mean, it'll go <laughs> close. But yeah, that's a consideration, certainly. 
Um, so that's that model. There are the specs there. It's got uh, a 256 gig hard drive, which is, that was one of the considerations in the survey that came through, is that hard drive storage space is really important. Um, only thing to bear in mind with that is once students have access to Office 365, bear in mind they're going to have a one terabyte OneDrive account. And so that's going to alleviate a lot of storage needs because they're going to be able to store a lot of stuff in the cloud, which is going to be really good. And then the last device is the one that we mentioned, the one that the teachers will be using. Um, top specs in terms of those features. Um, and yeah, that, we've got them all at the front here, so at the end you can come up and have a look and feel and ask us any questions about them. At this point, I'm going to get Vicky to give you a, a guided tour through the purchasing portal so that you can see how it works. First thing I just want to stress though is how you get to the purchasing portal um, because you can only access it by going through the Seaview High School website. So I've just got a screenshot here of the digital learning page on the school's website and to get to the digital learning page you access through this menu, Family Information. There's a drop-down menu, you click on Digital Learning, and then the link to the purchasing portal is down the bottom there. Uh, and at that point, I'll navigate to the page and get Vicky to give you a tour. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to you all. I think it's really important when we're running a portal like this that you actually see me. I'm not just someone on the end of an email, so I'm actually a real person. And I have a support person in our team called Jalil, and he is usually the first person on the phone. So he's me when you can't get me, and he could quite possibly answer you if you have any questions as well. Um, and in saying that, the rest of our whole team in the building know that parents will be calling through and having some questions, so we try to prepare them. Um, when you um, go to the address, the first thing that you'll be faced with is one of the features of our site, and this is to help you understand how to get around the portal and how to enter the information. And so it's just going to step one as your first step, basically. If you want to um, just go next once, yep. there, Jen. It steps you through step by step on what you need to do. So if you want to go through that process, you can. If you're like most kids, you just go straight in there and just dive in. <laughs> so if you want to close that window, yep. you. if you want to access that again, excuse me, going across, I'm going to scroll up a little bit. You can actually access it here to replay it and it will pop back up again. There's also a commonly asked questions page as well. <coughs> so in saying that, if you go back down again, Jeremy, make sure, no, the other way. Oh, yeah. Make sure when you go to the site, however you get to it, that it actually has CBU about this offer and has that picture there. If you just go to the CompNow website, you'll just see our corporate website and you won't be able to find your way to what's actually the offering for CBU. Yeah, so it's just to... I'll bring it up again. That's the CBU website, family information, digital learning, and then down the bottom there is the link. Yep. So that's usually the trickiest bit because once you get to there, it's pretty easy to work your way through. So there's some information about this offer here about how you can email me and call if you have any questions. And if there is any changes to the timing, for example, when we get to the end of the year, getting closer to Christmas and what delivery dates will be when the portals open and close, that will always be in that information there. So always have a bit of a read of that because that, that will change over time. And so your help sections there at the bottom. There's also an online chat if you want to chat. And this, that's pretty cool. Is that, that this, comes, this one here? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that will come directly through to me in my inbox. Okay, so if you have any questions there and you don't want to call, it's late at night, I'll get that and my first opportunity I'll contact you back. So please don't be frightened. It's not a strange person, it's actually me. Or Jalil if I forward it to him. Um, so from there it's follow the bouncing ball, step one. And one of the things I encourage people to do is rather than putting all your details in straight away, if you just want to have a look around, just make yourself test. So if you want to okay. just make a test user. Yep. And then um, you select the year level. So if you go to 8 and 9, that'll take you to the iPad section. But if yeah. you go to 10 and 12, that's what we're talking about now. And you add that user with the green button, Jeremy. Uh, I'll add, yeah. There you go. Now, the reason we do that is because you might have multiple students to buy for that have different requirements. So you can add each student as you go through. Um, and then it gives you the opportunity to select the student that you would wish to buy for. So test has already been created. Then it gives you the list of devices. 
So as you go through there, now as Jeremy said, the offering at the moment is in the realms of good, better, best. This is what the offering is at the moment that we've managed to get pricing on in those areas. If those machines become discontinued or if pricing changes, this is where this will be updated and we'll always make that endeavour to do the good, better, best that fits within what the school and yourself require. So in saying that, if you bought this machine today and in January you went in there, <coughs> we had to update the portal with something else, there might be an updated model in there. It is actually just about like when you walk into a store, what is available at that time. Okay. If you want to click on one of them. Yep. So when you, when you click on one, you get more information. Okay, so it gives you more about specs. There's a little drop down menu there. Yeah. It won't let you add it to the cart until you actually make a decision. Right? They all come with three year warranty. There's also an option for insurance. Now, my little spiel on this is generally across, and this is what you get from anyone who calls us. If you believe that you would like your device insured, please look at your contents insurance because how many people have portables insurance on their insurance? Yeah. If you don't know about it, please ask because it's actually the cheapest option for you rather than going down this path, okay? So I didn't know about it, it cost me an extra $90 a year. It covers my cameras, my iPad, my, you know, like my GoPro, my external hard drive, anything that is a portable device in our family, it actually covers that within my house insurance. So have a look at that first, because that's usually the best option. But we actually have some people who say, my child is a disaster zone and I really want to pay individual insurance. That will cover you if you drop it in the pool, if it gets run over by a car, whatever, right? It is unquestionable insurance for that period of time. There is an excess on it. But if you want to go down that path, you can. If you don't want the insurance, you can just hit no. Okay. And it will give you the option to then add it to the cart. But there's also this other information about the device. Yep. So it gives you a little bit more information. It's a little bit more about what the... And there's a product disclosure statement. So you can actually go and look on the website and read about those if you okay. want to do it as well. So add to, add to cart? Sorry? Add to cart? Add to cart. Yep. Oh, whoops. So, and then if you close that, you'll see there's a shopping cart that moves up and down on this side. If you decide you don't want it anymore, or you want to change, you can actually select the insurance from there, where you can click the Xbox and get rid of it. Xbox. So please don't be frightened of clicking around and playing with things, because you're actually test. No one knows who you are anyway, and nothing will be <laughs> until you hit confirm by way down the bottom. All right? So please play around and have a look. The other reason that we do that is that as Jeremy mentioned, the pricing that we've got and the portal that we're doing is because we're already in partnership with the school. I only actually do portals with schools that we're already in partnership with for other reasons, particularly with infrastructure and whatever else, as a value add. Because we actually don't make a great deal of money out of them. That's not our aim. Our aim is to actually support the programs within the school. So the pricing that we put up here is very definitely cheaper than what you will get at retail, and it always has the three-year warranty. If you were to go through and see all those specs and there was a special on at Harvey Norman and you go that you ring me up and say, hey, it's three hundred dollars cheaper, I'll go check the model, check whatever it is, you know what, that's a bargain. But at least you know it's a bargain because you actually know that you're gonna get cheaper than a retail by looking at it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you want to make your decision out of this portal, you're never gonna be ripped off. Alright? Is it the best buy? On that day, every time, I can't guarantee that because sometimes retailers will cut the living daylights out of something to get rid of it or offer a special to get you in the store. So I'm not going to promise you it's always the cheapest price, but it's certainly cheaper than you would pay if you went into a retail store called. But also their devices that we've talked to the school about and we know will be suitable for the students at the school. And we can support them through our service model as well. So as Jeremy was saying, if it you know has to come in through warranty, I call if you haven't got an answer straight away from HP, Dell or, no, or Fujitsu, we're on the phone straight away because we've got a really big relationship with them and they better answer us. Okay. So you can go through and actually have a look at those at your leisure and pick whichever one you like. Um, then we get down to step three, there's some accessories in there, you don't have to choose any. But there's some, I've got some samples of these. Now, there's a little micro drive there, external drive, but there's also a standard drive. The items that I put on here are not necessarily the cheapest bags or drives that you will buy, but they are ones that I know that come with good warranty. The bags and sleeves are really good protective sleeves, obviously, and have a great warranty. 
um, offering and they always have supply. Those hard drives have a good warranty on them as well. So if anyone has had a hard drive fail to try and get their data off it, will understand what it's like when you actually have a decent quality drive that will last you. Um, so we will, we will change those through from time to time. There's no obligation on you there, it's just something that you can choose from if you wish. Um, and they'll always be cheaper than retail as well. You have to pick something to remove oh, okay. so we can't go any further. Yep. Um, so from here, you can just tab through and just do the TTT. Yep. If you like. Step four is your billing information. Um, so part of the advantage to the school with the portal is that the fact that we're partnering means that, you know, you can see what's on offer here and we can have this conversation. But the last thing the school wants to be doing is getting involved in financial and logistical, you know, relationships with you, purchasing a device. So everything that you do through here is actually directly with us. All, right? all this information here that we take from you means that we know where to deliver it, we know your phone number, we can contact you via email, we can deal with you directly. All right? So as you go through there, there's nothing that's going to go out of this that's going to go to any other third parties. This is just purely for us to transact with you and keep information. Delivery methods, um, school shipping, so that's to ship it here to the school. Australia Post, that will probably become more relevant over the Christmas period. If you decide to order a machine and the school's closed, we can actually have it delivered to your, to your home. So if you're not there, you get a car and you go to the post office, so it's actually safe. Um, so you can pick whichever one of those you want. Yep. Um, payment methods. So, purchase order, before you were all run off and decide you're going to do a purchase order, order and the school can pay for it, we don't process them unless we've actually got a purchase order from the school. <laughs> okay? And that would only be by negotiation, and that's just for the convenience of the school to be able to purchase machines themselves through this portal as well. Um, one finance is a six months interest free option, option if you'd like to select that, Jeremy, I'll just show you what happens. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a relationship we actually partner with um, these people. There's kind of the details. If you go apply now, it will take you off to their website and you do your own application with them. We do not do any financials with you. We don't have any of that information. You go off and you liaise with them. You go through a process where they approve or disapprove. It's a little bit like a GE card. So if you pay within the six months, you pay no interest. In a lot of these, it's probably a very good way to go if you um, don't have any other options. Um, there's no interest on it if you pay it within that six months. Right? But you go off and you apply. If they approve, they'll send you an approval thing back and, and us an approval thing back and then we'll process the order for you. Nothing gets processed and this is actually approved. Um, if you want to go out of that journey, just go back to, say, um, Internet banking, banking or something. Yep. It'll give you the opportunity to do that. When you go confirm, it'll ask you to go on. It'll, it'll give you all the details so you can go off and pay for that. There's a summary. So if you decide you're not happy with that, you can go into your cart and change it. You can go back up and you can go up and down how you wish. This only goes through when you hit confirm. So you've got to go a really long way before you're actually confirming to purchase. So you can have a really good look through there. When you confirm that, which we won't do now, when you confirm that, I get an email that says, you know, Joe Bloggs has purchased on the CD hub so called portal, this is what they've purchased. I don't get any financial details from you. I just get what you've purchased. You will get an email back, which confirms that purchase, gives you a link to be able to follow up an ETA, so you can actually log in and have a look. It gives you all of the contact details, so you've actually got a confirmation of that order. We then monitor that. Um, generally, orders take 10 working days. And I say generally because I can't promise manufacturers. Sometimes they'll come through really quickly. <coughs> sometimes they take longer. But we have your details, so we know if it's going to be any longer. We will generally contact you, and you're always welcome to call us to check in if you want to. Um, hopefully that will make sense. Does anyone have any questions about that? Does it include any software that's pre configured in the machine? So we just purely supply the machines. You'll see that they'll come with almost and come with Windows 10. And whatever happens after that, the children have that access to 365, so that will be where their logins come. After that, no, unless the school supplies something, we don't we don't image the machines, we don't open the boxes, we don't configure them in any way, shape or form. They're purely your purchase. What happens after that is up to yourselves. Um, 
And I think part of that transition too with the Office 365 enabling people to be able to use any device means that there's not a lot of software that has to be installed on the machine so they're not taking up a lot of space. There's not management for the school to yeah. do that and image them and control it. Yeah. Just on that though, with Office 365, what it does, allow, Office 365 allows you through the, the education department to download the desktop versions of Microsoft Office. So you, for free, you'll get the full Microsoft Office suite through the Office 365. So it will come with Windows 10 and you'll have access to Microsoft Office. Is that if you buy it from anywhere? Yeah, if you buy it from anywhere, you'll still get <coughs> Office 365 access through the education department. <coughs> yeah, so you don't need to purchase <coughs> Microsoft Office. Yeah. Is it just one Office 365 license? No, I think you can install them on five devices. Is that right? Yeah. Five devices you can install them on. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, that, that's alleviating the burden on the school and having to, like, <coughs> the devices over here, the traditional model has been that the school has to maintain the software and the operating systems and keep them up to date and supply all of that software and that's where quite a lot of the burden comes in a shift now. Putting a lot more money back into that infrastructure and actually taking it from the end user devices means that if we can if we can go down that path it's a much better experience for everyone. But having having you know your LMS and having all your storage off side and all those sorts of things means you don't have to go for a hugely huge hard drive on your machine. And to be honest my recommendation usually is to parents 256 is probably a good hit because after that you've got kids storing all the stuff on there that then becomes precarious data that is at risk while they've got the, the machine mm -hmm. out. So, yeah. um, with that, obviously going out the windows, unlike um, Apple products, virus protection. Yeah. Does the school provide that for, for the student's uh, computer? No, I mean, here at school, obviously, we've got, we'll have the internet filtering, which should be um, very secure, so it's very unlikely that a student would ever um, get a virus while here at school connected to home networks and internet surfing, what they need to do, no. Current BYO devices um, will not be connected unless the, um, they already have an antivirus software up to date one installed on them, that'll be the same thing again. So you'll need, you can choose which antivirus you use, but it's not something the school provides. I recommend one because we know how they conflict against each other at times. And, uh, we can actually yeah. have a look at a recommended list. There are some, mm. some companies that provide consumer level um, antivirus software that are actually really corporate level suppliers. So some that come to mind would be like Sophos. So you can actually have your own download mm. from those. What we might do is actually come up with a list with the boards yeah. that you might want to publicise that are trusted links to have antivirus software that it's so long as you keep it up to date. So there's still an obligation, there's no point installing it and then forgetting about it. And yeah. not taking notice of the updates because that's where you keep going. Um, the Microsoft product come with them? Yes, there is some within the Microsoft products as well. So, you know, there's, there's a whole range of things that protect you. It's a really good point. I've made a note of it. Um, I've got just a couple of slides. The last one is questions. So I might just um, finish those jump, and then we'll jump out to the Q&A. Yep. So if you've got any questions on that, give me up Yep. Yep. Cool. So one of the considerations is about uh, any families that are in circumstances that just don't enable them to be able to purchase these devices. And so... Uh, our business manager, Tracy Abberley, you can email her uh, with an app to make an application for special considerations where we can provide a school-owned device in certain circumstances. Uh, and they'll be decided upon in a, at a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and then... Finally, sorry, yeah, do you mind just jumping on? It's just a, it's just a questions slide. Um, this is the opportunity to ask questions. I thank you for holding them until now. It'll work really good with the recording because people can watch the information part first or they could watch the Q&A part if we have them separately. Uh, I do want to touch on, before we go into open questions, um, MacBooks because this 
this proposed uh, program has come about through wanting to try and provide um, a program that is as simple as possible and as effective as possible for students and teachers. It's, it's all been based on best practice teaching and learning. That's what's driven it all. And we ha have a feeling that best practice teaching and learning happens when you have some consistency within the classroom and that you have some consistency with what devices students are using and what operating system they use. We felt that way even, even stronger before we had started to plan updating our infrastructure because in our, with our outdated infrastructure and with our total open slather of devices that students were using here, you can probably imagine it was almost impossible to try and support that at a, for every single user who was in a slightly different individual situation. What we're starting to find now, now that we're completing these upgrades on our infrastructure and, and getting the back end of our school IT working really effectively, is that we may find a situation where it will be fine for MacBooks and like for to use the, win, the Windows operating system and the Mac operating system within this environment. And we may get to a point where we can actually have a MacBook on the portal, but it's early days for that conversation. At this stage, we recommend that you're choosing from those four devices. And if, but if you've got further questions about that, if you've got a burning desire for using a MacBook, please speak to us about it, because ultimately this program is built around best practice teaching and learning. and fulfilling the needs of the staff and of the students. And so that's what we that's what we ultimately want to do. So I thank you for listening to all of that. And then again my email address is there if you don't think of a question now but something pops up in the um, rest of the year that you want to speak to me about, please send me an email. But just open up for any questions that you've got. Yes. So we're basically saying rule out the existing iPads that the students are using? No, we're still going to continue the iPad program at year 8 and 9. But, but year 10. Maybe. Moving into year 10. I would suggest the iPad could still be a useful device at times. There could be some creative type t tasks where the iPad's going to serve, it's going to be fantastic for the student to use. But we need them to have the laptop from years 10, 11 and 12. Yeah, but what some families are doing, I know, is planning to, okay, so one student might be moving into senior school, one's coming into middle school, the iPad moves along and then the laptop comes into play, something like that. But best case scenario, they might have both, but the one that they're really going to need for 10, 11, 12 is the <laughs> laptop. Yes? Uh, current year 11 student actually has her own... Device, that's still going to be suitable? Yeah, that's a good question. Yes, I think the answer to that is yes. Yeah, it will, it will still um, still be connected to our network. They'll still be able to use it here at school. Obviously, though, the amount of support we can offer those devices is um, not as comprehensive as the ones that are purchased through the portal. But no, we're not expecting students, if they already have a device they're using here, to go out and buy a new one through the portal yeah. if the one they've got is of, sufficient. Of course you can. The portal is there for anyone to access, but... Ultimately, the only real thing that is, the only major change of what's, what's ending with our digital learning program, and it probably should have ended sooner than this year, but it's the use of these things. We just can't continue that. I'm sorry, I, I know some students are persisting with them, but it's just not feasible moving forward. So if you're moving into year 10 next year, or if you're a year 11 student or a year 12 student and you're relying on a school-owned device, as of 2018, you'll need to access your own personal device. Right. I'll add one other thing to that as well. Devices like these desktops um, are an ageing fleet as well within the school and we're not looking at um, replenishing them to the same extent because uh, our, our money we feel can be best invested in other digital means for the students. So over time the number of desktop
computers will actually diminish here at the school as well because we are moving towards every student having their own device. So that's something else you need to consider as well. There won't be a case of, oh, they'll just use a school computer if they don't have a laptop because we'll actually have cut those down for, you know, your primarily your, your digital graphic design, photography sort of subject. <coughs> So they'll be available in specialist areas yeah. for specialist programs yeah. with specialist um, software. Yeah. So when when we order the laptop, do you want us to do anything in terms of setting it up, or does that wait until they start school? No. I, what we'll do is we'll run. Uh, a, I believe we haven't really talked this far forward yet, but what we do with the year eights when they come in with their iPad is we run a session where we sort of onboard the iPads with the school network, and we would we would do certainly with year nines going into ten where we're going to have new devices in the hands of every student run a similar type process. Um, I hadn't thought though about uh, how long will it take for the devices to arrive through the portal. Them, um, it's usually about 10 working days on most of them. So, so if you're accessing the portal now, you could be in a situation where the student's already have has the device before the end of this year. And so I think we need to leave that one with us and we'll get back to you about maybe onboarding devices to get used to them for the end of this year. Mm. Um, it's not something we've really considered or discussed yet, but we'll get back to you on that one. So the way it works over the Christmas break is really what we need to do is pay attention to the fact that the schools have the conduit for you to receive those devices. So what we would probably do is shut off all the other options other than Australia Post yeah. or Pickup. So you could come to our office and pick up, or you could opt for the Australia Post option and then that would come to you that way. Of course, then we've got the odds and ends of you know, manufacturers being open and closed on it, so that's always going to be a bit dicey over the Christmas period doing that. My advice to people is put your orders in as early as you can because then we've got plenty of time to get them to you before the term starts. All right? So, you know, I would rather say if you think that you are going to go down this path, put it in as early as you possibly can so that we can make sure that we have them ready for it, that they're actually in your hands before school starts. After the Christmas period, we'll probably work with the school on the days that they open and are ready to receive, and then we can have orders coming back through the school again. So you'd be kind of in that limbo period over Christmas if the child just using the devices if it's you know, not going to be on the network until they come into the school and then go through that onboarding process. Usually that's something that IT would work with the students and yourselves on. What does that look like? It might just be that there is you know, an address they go to and they log in. Does that answer your yeah, question? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yes. So will students be able to access the Office 365 downloads prior to the start of the term? Yeah, so you access the Office 365 via your LearnLink account. But we mm -hmm. as a school, I think, have to activate that. Yeah. We haven't done so yet because we're waiting for the, the finalisation of all of our infrastructure work before we activate Office 365. So we'll, all, yeah. Yeah. we'll communicate to families when it comes online. Um, but yeah, at the moment it's just we just can't cope with if we open up a one terabyte cloud drive to every student and they go home and chuck 500 gigabyte on there and then come to school and try and sync, it will blow up the school. So um, <laughs> yeah, that's not. <laughs> so we, as soon as it uh, is, it is available for, uh, we haven't even turned it on for our staff yet. So as soon as it becomes available for families, we'll let you know. But so. I suggest that that's not going to happen until after you sign it. Yeah. 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 So they will be able to, and this is a really stupid question, they will be able to get eventually get the 365, mm -hmm. log on to this learning <coughs> link at home mm -hmm. yeah. on our network mm -hmm. and get access to the stuff that they've stored mm -hmm. in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Yes, any device. Yeah. And whatever gets done at home mm -hmm. goes on our little download. <coughs> Yep, that's right. Yep. Bigger meter thing that's going yep, on. Yeah, and you that. can access it from And Minecraft phone. is not allowed on any school device. <laughs> we, we can't control them having it on it, we can control their access to it. So. <laughs> Does that include Minecraft for education? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so if we we get laptop for older sibling, yep. 
younger sibling comes and instead of buying them an iPad, can they inherit the laptop from year eight, possibly? They could. Obviously, your warranty would run out, yeah. um, and the suitability of that device for a student going into there would be, yeah, it'd be like instead of using a new iPad, it'd yeah. be like using an old iPad 2 or something like yeah. that. So there's limitations in terms of what they can do with it. Yeah, so. I, I was just thinking, like, once they get to year 10, the younger sibling obviously buy them a new one, but instead of having to buy an iPad again and a, you know, for copious amounts of siblings. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, my thoughts is I reckon two years of an iPad and then another sibling using that iPad. I'm not yet. Yeah. Probably doable. Yeah. The laptop for three years and then it going to mm. a year ten to use. No, no, a year eight to use instead of an iPad. Oh. Yeah. That's not ideal. We we really at the moment we really see the iPad as being the the best fit for our year eights and nines for the interactivity and creativity that it offers that is different to a laptop. So ideally, it's not the way we're proposing that it would look like. That might become more obvious now that the infrastructure's open up and we can so. actually do more creativity. We think so, yeah. Yes? In terms of the payment, so the card payment, for example, so does that stay on the... the uh, the cop now site or does it go to another a service provider? That goes that does not go on our cop now site at all. That's not none of that information is kept for us now. So is that default to another payment gateway like Yeah, so Polly is a uh, Polly is one of the ones that does the um, the direct oh. deposit and that's a secure independent site so it has nothing to do with us um, and I'm pretty sure it's the same with the credit card one I can confirm that if you want to ask me that question specifically my details are up there if you email me through I can actually find the answer up for that okay. as well I do have it somewhere but I can't remember the exact site that goes to I know the direct debit is Polly and that's an independent managed like secure we did want to have an opportunity for you to come and uh, have a look at the demo devices that we have here if you're interested. Um, and so perhaps if you've got any other questions, the three of us are here, just come up and ask us. Um, yes? I might just say one thing before we finish, because particularly leading up to Christmas, um, and I know that the, the 907 as the minimum, the lowest level one, might put some people off. And there's a temptation, particularly as um, Christmas comes out, you'll see a lot of laptops that advertise for four, five, six hundred dollars at JB Hi-Fi or other ones like that as well. You just got to be aware that the, the laptops that we've put on here are ones that are really good quality. A lot of those cheaper four, five hundred, six hundred dollar laptops, the casings, um, the uh, electronics within are all much cheaper. Um, and they probably, actually I can probably guarantee they will not last you for three years at school and so you're actually better off looking at something which is quite reliable and as I said, contacting Vicky if you think you found something that's good, check with her because she'll be very, very honest about it with you. If, it, All if right? you've got a better price on something equivalent, I'll certainly tell you because yeah. it's... It's really all about the... I can, I can just imagine the salespeople in retail mm. Just ignoring that part, but looking at the flashy, nice look of the laptop, but it's really the processor, that i3 processor, that's the minimum requirement. 8 gig RAM, uh, and actually an i3 processor and not some of these other um, inferior ones that, that they have. Um, so it's really all about those specifications. If you're shopping around, if it meets those specifications and it's a better price, and it has a three year warranty and it's durable. Can I just touch on that for you? Yeah. So, the other reason for, for going across with the Fujitsu, the HP, and the Dell is the schools going with HP, that was a really considered thing, and also having that same machine available for students was a really high priority. So, that ticks off the high end one and the HP being the, the other one at the other end. So, they're a very tough and well warranted and well supported machine within South Australian schools. The Dell is also very well supported within South Australian schools. The model, the Latitude is very popular, it's very rugged, they've got a good service model. The Fujitsu is a relationship that Comp now has nationally. We also have a relationship with some other vendors as well, but Fujitsu are pushing very, very hard into the education space because they've got these really durable cases. But also, they are like Apple. 
in that they make the machine and they make the components of the machine, most of the components of the machine. They're not actually sourcing everything from everywhere. So they're actually a really good service model. They actually know those inside and out. So we actually have a really good relationship with them and we'll be becoming a service provider for, but we are already service providers for HP, but we'll also be doing Fujitsu, so we'll be able to do those repairs directly. So the reason that we picked those is because they've got good support models, they're solid machines, they've got a good reputation, and they're pretty hardy. I actually won't put on quality machines that are cheap and nasty and that we can't support because it's a bad experience for you and me. Um, so, and that goes with all of the, the other stuff that we do. As far as I'm concerned, the children in this school deserve the best devices we can possibly get for them at prices that are competitive. We know that there are lots of devices out there that might go to the $400 mark. You might get a year out of them. The battery life is probably not good. You might get a year decent battery life. In year two and three, they're going to be plugging the plows by every five minutes. So even if it's 10 hours in the first year, you can look at decreasing down as time goes by on your battery life as well. So you've got to look at those things over a period of time. Um, I didn't tell anyone I was doing this, but I've got a prize for the person who had the best question. And I actually think you're asking about the credit card to the fourth <laughs> 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 All right, so we might just break off informally, uh, and Bill and Vicky and I will hang around, come and have uh, a touch and feel if you're interested in these. But yeah, thank you very much again for coming in, and we hope we've got some of your questions here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.